Hello, my name is Rosalind Hayes, and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to control a breathy voice. Um, so the first thing that we really need to do is to identify a, a breathy voice for one that is not breathy or has core to the sound. What we're talking about when we're talking about core is that sound that has a, a defined central pitch to it, and it's a strong central pitch. A, a strong sound with core would be something more like ah. It has a very clearly defined central pitch. If it doesn't have that central pitch or it's kind of dispersed and a little bit more vague, it's going to sound something more like ah. And there's going to be that airy quality to it. It's not going to have that kind of laser focus that we're looking for in the sound. But that is not to say that having a breathy sound is necessarily wrong in certain circumstances. Um, it can be used for stylistic effect, uh, especially among, you know, more contemporary artists and pop stars, not so much in classical and operatic music, but, um, you know, think, you know, Justin Bieber or Ariana Grande or Selena Gomez, all of those um, contemporary stars or even some of the classic rock or rock stars or jazz stars, they use that a little bit from time to time as well. So it's not necessarily wrong for stylistic effect. In some cases, it's an appropriate thing to do, but just don't overdo it um, because it can be wearing to your voice after a while because you're not really using your voice in the way that it's supposed to be functioning um, in terms of, you know, finding that central pitch. There's been studies that have been shown, shown that people who do constantly sing airy because they don't have that breath control support, they're not practicing that proper technique, the vocal cords actually swell a little bit and, and, and they end up with vocal issues. So it's fine to be using that breathiness stylistically, but just, you know, don't use it all the time for all of your pitches. You know, you use it because you've chosen to, not because you don't have any other choice. So... There are a couple of reasons why someone might have breathiness as a beginner. Um, one reason is that they don't know how to use their air properly or where they're supposed to be breathing from. A lot of people, when they start to say voice lessons, they breathe from the upper chest and the shoulders move. We don't want that in singing because we can't control how fast that air is released. Remember, I had another video where I talked about where to breathe from and how you should be using your breath. If you're breathing from your chest, you can't control how fast that air is released. So oftentimes what I'll hear in beginning students is we'll have a characteristic breathiness in the beginning, uh, followed by a push and strain at the end, uh, as they try to get that last bit of air out and the pitch tends to go flat or go out of control. It's like a car that's got no more gas and the power steering goes out the window. So um, they lose control of their voice because the air is released all at once at the beginning and there's a leaking of air. The vocal cords are forced open by so much air being shoved up through the vocal track. Um, and so we get all of this leaking of air ah, in the sound. And then at the end, there's no more air to go around. So then it's pushed and the sound is forced out by brute force on the vocal cords. So that's not good. We don't want that. Um, the other thing that might be happening is not really so much breathiness, but lack of focus. And we often see this in larger voices. Um, uh, particularly around the passaggio, which is the place where uh, the voice wants to change from the chest voice to the head voice. Um, and the a larger voice often tends to want to throw, fall back in the throat and go a little too dark. Last, last week I talked about a nasal sound, an overly nasal sound. This is kind of the opposite problem, the yawny please sound with no focus. Um, so in the passaggio, you might hear something like, yawn. as it falls back around into the back of the throat in the passaggio. One way to correct that is to go overly bright with the sound first and really find the focal point to go overly narrow with the sound. So oftentimes I do, I do this not so attractive exercise with students who have that particular problem. We kind of go over the top, we go nya, 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 to find the right placement and then open it up to an ah vowel. Ah, it's, it feels like it's in the same place, but I've just opened my mouth up. 
Some people lack focus throughout the registers when they have particularly big voices and that voice is just really stuck in the back of the throat. Another suggestion for that would be to, again, narrow the vowel. A nice bright E vowel is going to throw that sound forward into the right placement. And then eventually start to open it up to more open vowels like ahs and oohs, vowels that want to pull further back. And that will help with that focus as well. All right. I hope you've enjoyed listening today. Um, as always, you can check out my website, rosalindhayssoprano.com, or visit any of the links below to learn more information or even take online lessons. All right. Take care, guys. Guys, bye.